Right, morning everyone. I uh, just received this in the post. Uh, this is uh, an artistic interpretation of a bust, a busty bust in fact, of uh, Sean Connery as Captain Marco Ramius in The Hunt for Red October. And the reason I got it is it was made for me by uh, AVE on his town pump CNC and sent so that it can sit on the Red October which is my smoker, slash submarine, slash barbecue, slash whatever. And, I mean, it's, it's a thing of beauty. Uh, I mean, yes, okay, let's uh, see if we can pick up some of the sharp edges on the back, obviously, now, because focusing and thing. But, uh, yeah, it will bite. And uh, some of these head injuries look like they'd probably worry the NFL. But it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I mean... This smoker was made by me with scrap metal, an angle grinder, generator powered stick powder and, and no experience, right? And it's now got a hood ornament that's made out of bright, bright shiny new material on a state-of-the-art CNC mini machine and no experience. Um, and it's just fucking glorious to behold. I mean, where else are you going to find an idiot who takes finely tuned machine for producing consistent parts time after time and uses it to produce one-off pieces well not even one-off like iteratively improve one-off pieces of art for Egypt across the world so just fantastic stuff uh, and today's exercise is going to be mounting the bust so uh, there's a few options obviously I mean we can set him up on the Conintar kind of sort of seems right uh, sort of played around with maybe trying to do this sort of a, a figurehead here, sort of on, on the bow spread, but we've got um, got like, you know, doors and things in the way and it gets quite hot. Uh, I thought about replacing this handle and just having it, but didn't quite like that. And in the end, I went back to this uh, idea of mounting it up on the conning tower here, but... Um, we're going to mount it on a spring, so we get a bit of like nodding dog action going on. I actually just want to check before we do that that we got room. Nothing's going to foul. No. Okay, lovely. So obviously we need to to mount it on a spring, um, but. Where one of the problems with that is that if this gets hot, which it does, uh, then you might end up ruining the, the spring steel and nobody wants a droopy bust, right? So I have got this stuff here, which is um, some heat sinking off a board for an induction cooker. It's quite quite hefty. So the idea is that we'll, uh, we'll lop a couple of pieces off that and kind of uh, set them sort of back back to back like that um, with a, a piece of saw blade stuck in the middle sticking up and um, catching them in the jacksy somewhere so I think we should get to work right so um, we've got this one cut in half and got this here, this is a piece of just old saw blade that um, I've cut off and cleaned it up on the old surface grinder here. Uh, and so you can see now a bit better what's going to happen. This is going to slot in here. This is going to be too long, so I'm going to cut off this edge here. And then I'm going to drill through, through this as well. Uh, and then clamp those two halves together to keep it nice and tight. Uh, the other end of this will be up and into to the statue app. Um, but the the final length and width of this is still to be determined, right? So um, they'll both have an effect on the degree of wobble we want. So I'm thinking we want a sort of bang, 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 bang. but that's to be determined, I guess. Um, the length and the the thickness of that will determine sort of the spring rate combined with the sort of the weight of the actual bust itself 
Um, so what I, got, I want to drill through here at both ends and actually use the bolts to anchor this in so it's not pulling on the soft aluminium. So yeah, next step I think is to go and measure the length for compare it to what we've got on the top of the conning tower there. Cut this and then see about drilling through everything and getting it all clamped together. Right, well, <laughs> just about got through before we uh, lost the uh, <laughs> drill for the second, third time, whatever. Problem with this is that it's like weather speed and that's all controlled north through everything through like that half inch of trigger travel. So <laughs> it's a little bit. A little bit picky, but I reckon we can just bash it out and should be alright. Well, I got it out, but it drew first blood, so there we go. Right, okay, three down. So we can do the last one one handed. <laughs> so <laughs> Is about this tapping knife is easy. <laughs> now watch me fuck up when I have to do the rest of it. Come over all Dr. Strange loves sat on this. <laughs> Pretty fucking good surface finish, if I say so. Needs a fancy CNC when you got the older. The Project Pro ankle grinder. Cheapest you can fucking get. Um Well, there we go. That worked out quite well actually. I'm going to try and drill some holes in a straight line. Never been my forte. Hey, fuck it. Who needs a drill press? How bottom that is. Yeah. Be like that. Um, so I've drilled through on this side. I've tapped in here. And then drilled this out so the threads will sit through and just counter something slightly. So the idea then hopefully the, just clamp through there into here and it will pull it all tight together and work nicely. So that's that bit I think done. Um, before final tidying up and the only other thing is this spring here. So this is a bit too springy for my liking. Um, so what I've done is I marked out where the uh, sort of the free space is. I'm not going to sort of drill, like, take anything away from here, but I'm just going to work on this bit. Uh, I've got the, um, the bench grinder set up, and I'll get a bucket of water and just keep grinding and dunking and grinding and dunking, and hopefully not ruin it too much. Alright, so getting there now is kind of final fit up. These, uh, these countersinks, the screws don't quite fit in there, so I'm just going to turn them up in the air. And the lathe there with the, uh, the old file. Let's see if we can get that to work a bit more nicely. Right, so the captain has been successfully piped aboard, and uh, not a moment too soon because uh, the reactors are being fired up and we're setting off on a mission. Quite pleased with how this has come out. We've got an appropriate amount of wiggle, I think. Uh, although this might not be its final configuration because I realised actually before I even started installing this that so what he really needs is port and starboard LEDs in his nipples uh, but that wasn't really feasible at this point because I, I mean yes I guess I could have cut it off here but I wanted to leave this as all the artist intended but so drilling up from there or here and then drilling in through there to try and sort of get everything to meet up. Never going to happen with the equipment I've got. But it has given me, me an idea, so stay tuned. Um, uh, racking my brains for something that I remember hearing a while back. It turns out it was an old AVE video when you were talking about Peltier modules, which will either convert electricity into a temperature differential or turn a te temperature differential into electricity. Now this, what well, you know, being on fire and everything, is quite hot. So I'm trying to figure out whether A, I want to try and do something with the Peltier modules and the LEDs or even just um, at the top here put on 
um, some sort of LED lamp that you can just clip over the top of the, of the chimney there. Um, so that, you know, when it's dark and you're trying to try and do stuff that you, you've got light, it seems quite good that it's sort of self-contained and um, yeah, running off the energy that would otherwise be wasted. So yeah, we're gonna, temperatures and pressures are all looking good. Just gonna let the boilers come up to temp and then we're gonna load on the warheads. Right, the uh, reactors come up to temperature. We have loaded on the munitions and we are underway uh, on board today. <laughs> we have a variety of warheads. Um, actually, before this thing showed up, I just went on a bit of a sort of freestyle bacon making bender last weekend. So, uh, yeah, this was a planned operation. But we've got regular Kia maple. This one down here is a uh, Chinese with uh, like hoisin sauce and five spice. This is orange and mocha bacon. Yeah, let's try it. This one here is Barbados Independence bacon because we've got Independence coming up in a, like a week. And so this has got a rum and sorrel here because there's what could be more Bajan than rum and sorrel. Uh, sorrel is like a dried hibiscus flower that you know we make into a drink at this time of year. So I'm using those as a cure. Yeah, it's an experiment. That one in the back there is a uh, garlic pork bacon. So <clears throat> yeah, close this back down. Captain Radius, Ramius, you ready to take the helm? Excellent. Should get back to my beer then. Uh, the garlic pork one is yeah, sort of a bit of a West Indian Christmas thing where you pickle pork and a metric fuck ton of garlic um, and so what I've done is add salt to that and I'm going to smoke it and slice it so you can see actually in the back there there's some of that garlic that it was cured with and doing smoked garlic to go with the garlic pork bacon because hey, you never have too much garlic uh, it is running where's my poker uh, it's running on um, Find some mahogany, obviously, because it's just how we roll. Don't worry, there's um, there's plenty more of it all around the garden. So, yeah, sorry, woodworkers, <laughs> I'm using like the nicest wood you can imagine to make my bacon. But hey, I think the bacon is important. So, I'm gonna cut back, crack open another beer, uh, let Captain Ramius take the helm, and hopefully we should have some bacon pretty soon. Right, well. Fun bit's over. Now we get to the tedious part, which is slicing it up. This, uh, this is the garlic one. Uh, just starting here on the, uh, the rum and sorrel. We've got a nice shaft and station set up on the go, because this is really not easy to get straight and consistent and accurate. But um, onwards and upwards, you know, we'll get there. Uh, I think it all worked out really quite well. The ones that I've done before, the regular, the maple, this garlic one here, and the Chinese hoisin were all really good, but we kind of knew that. This rum and sorrow one was really nice, but not enough rum. Like we got the like, nice sort of pinky colour for the sorrow ones that I can find. Here we go. This is sorrel here. So this is, um, yeah, just sort of dried leaves or dried flowers, really. But um, yeah, that's the thing. So we've got plenty of colour out of that, but not much rum flavour. It flumbed off the alcohol, so it was not to have, sort of have it nasty, but I think it might have gone a little bit too far there. So, promising start. Needs a bit of tweaking. The other experimental one, the orange marker, was fine, but you really didn't get any orange marker. Well, a little bit, but not a lot. But hey oh, that's an experiment. It still tastes good, so you know, no harm, no foul. Um, and that's about it for this mission, I think. So thanks once again to ABE for all the tomfoolery and being a good sport. And the, is it there? We can see it? I don't know, just kind of can't quite catch the corner of this walker out there. But um, yeah, he's taken pride of place. It's all installed, it's all going well. 
so uh, on with the next project. I'd say that's mission accomplished. Everything all beautifully sliced up. A couple of experimental flavours. Yeah, mostly kind of work, but <laughs> got a lot of bacon. So everybody's happy. Frying bacon. You know you're doing it right when it sounds like stick welding. <laughs>